Hi guys, it's Ricky and this is Ricky Reveals. So, um... Uh, I think I... I think I'm supposed to keep that to myself. Um... Like, you know, there's the whole trust the process thing and God's timing and, and, you know, it doesn't matter what you want. It's kind of got the God's timing. Um, so you might as well just surrender to the process, but there is definitely a strong, like, sense on the feminine side that she or he, depending on how it resonates, but not take much more they need their masculine more than they can ever express they need their miracle they need they've been through a lot this season and they need for the season to close and for the next one to to open up even though in the spiritual it already has but i'm speaking to feminines that haven't seen the change in the physical yet Maybe you're being called to give something up. Maybe you're being called to surrender to the process. There's something I think that you're holding on to that you're being asked to let go of and you're not seeing it. And that's what's the real hold up. And I think part of it is you really just don't get it. Like, you're like, what is it? Please, I would have let it go 10 days ago if you'd have just tell me what it is um and then there's i think some part of its aggravation some part of it is to be all the way real and honest they're pissed off because of what they've been through and they feel like they've gotten no justice they feel like they have no one uh, they feel like the entire world's against them um and it seems like every time they try to to stand up for themselves, because that's one of the lessons they needed to learn. And they, this feminine that I'm speaking to, they um, they recognize that that that's something that they've they've been people pleasing their whole life. They let people push them over their whole life, um, and they do recognize that one of the lessons of the season was to learn how to stop doing that. But they feel like every time they go to make that stand they have like it's one against the world you know i mean it's them against the world because even if they're just with one person it's like once they gotta make that stand four people show up out of the woodwork and they're standing with that person that is trying to bully them so yeah feminines energetically let's stand together because i i don't know how much more i can take either I really, I have gone through this as gracefully as I can, but even the strong only have so much strength. We're not God. And really, I'm at that point to where I just, I'm, God, what do you see that I don't see? Because I'm telling you, I don't have anything left to get. If you don't give me that breakthrough, if you don't give me my masculine back, if you don't do something i'm going to crumble and fall under this pressure that you're putting me under which i mean that's how diamonds are formed you know through great pressure but man when when god told me i think it was two two years ago um he said you're going to be tried by the fire and you will not burn if i knew then what i know now I'd be like, can I just go through the water? Can I, like, I like? <laughs> can you flood the world again? Let's not do the fire. <laughs> I'll take my risk with waiting in the water for 40 days. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be funny, but, man, I really did not, when I heard him tell me that, that was, well, it might have been three years ago. I think it was, yeah, it was COVID. It was right there, like, in February, beginning of March of 2020, I was down in Florida 
and I actually was throwing stuff into a fire and um, literally as I was watching one of the things I'd thrown in there catch flame I heard the Holy Spirit say you will be tried by the fire and you will not burn and I knew when I heard it that it was it was no joke like I mean I was gonna go through some shit but I did not realize I was gonna go through what I've been through and I just I'm I'm not wanting to give up but I really am like wanting support <laughs> nine of pentacles so i mean obviously i'm talking to a very independent person um you are a hard worker you um you don't complain a lot you are very grateful um you do ha you have the spirit of gratitude you have the um, spirit of thankfulness um you see the world through rose-colored glasses, or at least you used to. You might not so much anymore after this last season, but um, but you have an innocent heart. You have an innocent spirit, and you're kind, and you're loving, and I mean, she's talking to a bird, which I think that could be symbolic for getting a message here in the near future, but she has a way about her. She's gentle. She's kind, she's forgiving, she's loving, and she can nurture anything that comes into her, um, comes along her path, anything that comes, she comes into contact with. It could be a beast, and she can tame the beast just by a couple soft word, gentle words, or maybe a soft touch. But he could be the biggest, baddest, meanest beast in the jungle. And if she, he comes along her path, she she can tame him. And she does it through unconditional love. Knight of Cups. Loving messages, earning or spending on passions. What did I just say? <laughs> I think you're about to get some um, love messages. Someone's about to open up to you. Someone, I do believe you know this person. <clears throat> or you have some kind of... Um, past with them. I mean like you've interacted with this person before whether it was on an intimate very intimate level or very sh like service based level but you have knowledge of this person um, you may not know that they care about you the way that they're about to tell you or maybe you guys were in a relationship and the way it fell up like the way it ended and you might not have had any contact with that person since it ended you might maybe you've questioned in your healing process of getting over the relationship you question the the genuineness of their of their words and the whether or not they really meant what they told you if they actually did care about you or not because you're like no one who loves somebody could actually do that like how can you love somebody one day and then the next day just disappear and then never speak to them again that's you can't like if you really love somebody you're just not gonna like separate from them like that unless there's something behind the scenes that you don't know about five of pentacles giving lots but not getting back trim down lifestyle for a while so you've definitely you've always given everything to everyone that you've ever had the pleasure of interacting with and you don't mind that that you that's your that's your purpose i mean like that you were designed that way and and you actually and authentically enjoy helping other people and you know whether it be words of wisdom um just giving them help like helping them move or um or financially like whatever it is that they needed you you're one of those people that just you show up, you know, and you, you, you do and help them with whatever it is they need. Um, but it's taken a real toll on you. And especially whatever you've gone through in this last season, it hits you pretty hard. I mean, probably the hardest you've ever been hit and you've been through some shit, but this one, 
And I think also because you were given a promise by God and either A, someone showed up that you thought was the promise and when things worked out the way they did, you were not only hurt by them and the situation and other people that were involved, you were pissed off at God because you were like, hey, you promised me that the next one was the one. What the hell? And I think in that, whether you did it intentionally or not, you wound up um, harboring some bitterness in your heart. And I think that you need to really um, do some meditation and really like dig deep and check into that because that definitely is not not who you are it's not that's not authentically you but because you've been through so much you just were like i this one was exactly what i asked for you told me the next one would be the one and i am tired of just forgiving and forgetting and then having to walk away and start over. Yeah, at least give me, a, get, make them come apologize or give me something. Like, and until you do, I'm not doing another freaking thing. And um, I think you got stuck in that mentality for quite a while. Um, and all that, like, I mean, there was other things, other betrayals, a lot of people involved. Um, family, friends, you know, people, all people that were supposed to love you, but they smiled in your face and stabbed you in the back. Um, so, and it happened all within a fairly quick, um, time span. And it just was, it was almost too much to handle. And I think it's all 12, 12, but, and I think you just said, you know what? I'm not giving up, but I'm refusing to be the bigger person this time. I want someone to be a bigger person than me. And until I get at least one person to do that, I'm just going to sit here. And if that means I waste the rest of my life, well, then fine. <laughs> but I think enough time has passed and you've done enough of the shadow work, enough of the, you've done enough crying to where you, you're you starting to get back into prayer and really like, okay, God, I know I had the wrong mentality. I'm sorry. I am really am sorry that I, that I was basically going against you on purpose because I felt I deserved something and you were trying to show me how to live without that. To let me know that I could go on without the things that I thought I needed because at the end of the day, even though, yes, you did deserve those things, those people shouldn't have done what they did to you and they did deserve to rest, give you restitution, to give you an apology, but when it's clearly obvious they're not going to do that until they are forced by God's hand. Um, you can't waste your life either. And you've got to pick up and keep fighting the good fight, you know, because you're going to miss out on some really good things. You're going to miss out on some blessings that God really wants you to have because you're being, I want someone to tell me they're sorry. And they didn't, they shouldn't have done that to me. Well, keep standing with your arms crossed and you're going to cross yourself out of the next blessing. Um, hermit, needing time alone, more independence, seek counsel from wise, wise ones. And I think that's exactly what you're doing. <clears throat> and I think it's why you've actually been able to get to the, the point you're at now to where you're like, you're almost there, but there's still just that little bit. It's like, really, I can't just have not even just one thing. Like, I mean... It doesn't even have to be the one thing I really wanted, but just anything to make me feel better about walking away from everything I've worked for my entire life. Hair font. Traditional thinking about relationships, traditional ideas, and cultural corporations. You might... If this is a person from the past, the one that was shitty and like just left, um, or 
just the way the relationship ended, it just didn't make sense because you guys had a really good connection. This person's going to come in now and they're going to ask you to marry them. But even though I think it actually might be like that you should probably say yes, but you shouldn't say yes right away. Ask them the right questions. Like, hey, look, why the fuck couldn't you have called me? Why couldn't you have, you know what I mean? Anything. Like, I, and I went through this, this, and this, and I, I felt like I was dying, and you were nowhere. You wouldn't even give me a fucking, I left you, bitch. I'm over it. Fuck you. Stop calling me. Like, nothing. You gave me nothing. Like, and I literally needed someone and I had no one. And now you want to come back after blase swoop, like, time and get down on one knee and ask me to marry you because you know I wanted that before you left. You just expect after all this time and all that I've been through, like, I'm just going to go ahead and say yes because you're finally giving me what I wanted all that time ago. I mean, 1616. Um, that's not to say you don't want it. I mean, maybe you don't want it. I mean, it's up to you, but at the same time, this person, they need to realize and they need to really, they need to hear you say it. They need to feel the pain uh, because they need to understand what their actions did to, to you. And also to realize that what they're doing now, if they're not ready, then just get the fuck up off that one knee and let's just be friends. Like, because I don't need any more empty promises in my life. Ace of Wands. New joy, love, creativity, new creative projects. I definitely think you guys, um, whether this is a new person or an old person, um, like I said, I think it's probably an old person just because of the way she's like connecting with this bird, like, it's not the first time this bird's landed on her head and they've had a conversation. But it very well could be a new person. Um, but whoever it is, you guys are going to work. I mean, you are going, it's going to be the love of a lifetime. Once you, I mean, I'm not saying like just jump into each other's arms and run to the nearest bed, but let it naturally, let it unfold naturally. And you guys will spend the rest of your life together. This really is a match made in heaven. There just was some traumas and some um, lessons that needed to be learned on both of your ends. Um, and I do think you guys both actually needed to grow spiritually, mature spiritually. Uh, and for whatever reason, you guys had to do that apart. And I think that's because you had to learn like, well, for one, there were certain things that you needed to learn so you could understand your counterpart better because there were certain traumas that you guys shared but then there were certain traumas that you guys held individually that the other one didn't fully understand because they'd never been through it um but now because of the split and the way it all played out you guys now both understand the traumas of the other one that you didn't previously um have any experience with and so now you guys can understand why your love languages don't always, you know, sometimes they're like this and other times they're like, <sighs> and it's like you guys miss each other, bypass each other. It's probably why the separation's taking so long because <laughs> you guys both were like stubborn and like, no, you come to me. No, you come to me. Like, and I think this one is just real clear or not. I mean, if you're the one that walked away, you're the one that needs to walk back, like come back because clearly there's been no communication so how is the one that got walked away from to know that if they show up at your house or if you even live there anymore um that you're going to want them there because the last image they have of you is you walking away and clearly stating with no words whatsoever that they're not worthy enough for you they're not good enough so why would they think after all this time, oh, if I wasn't good enough then, maybe if I just show up at the front door, like I'll be good enough now. No. So whoever it was that like left, you need to, I'm not saying come with your um, tail wrapped around 
your uh, ankles and like begging, but I mean, let the ego die and the pride die enough to where you can knock on the person's door that you walked away from. Because if they do tell you no, I'm not saying like I like condone like breaking people's hearts, but in a roundabout sort of way, you kind of you kind of deserve that because of your callous mishandling of them in the past. Because I'm pretty sure this person's not gonna be like you, motherfucker, you. I don't ever. I can't believe you had the audacity to show up my house. Blah, blah, blah. I think they're going to be like, hey, you know, me and you had a great thing. And I love you from the bottom of my heart. But because of the way everything's played out, just don't think I could invest my heart again because you almost took me out. The moon. <sighs> There's... Hmm. Listen to your intuition, not the words that are coming out of his mouth. Pay attention to his energy, his vibe, and your intuition. I, I mean, obviously, listen to the words that come out of his mouth, but there's something, there's an illusion wrapped up in this separation that he's not fully prepared to come off of yet, or for whatever reason, he doesn't have either he doesn't have the balls to like tell you like a certain thing or tell you the complete details um because he's just scared that that'll be the straw that breaks the camel's back or yeah he's gonna try and sugarcoat something because the cold hard truth will just simply Break your heart all over again. Quarreling but union worth saving. Loss of trust, unhappy job. See, I think you've kind of always intuit intuitively knew this. And that's why you've kind of like been like, okay, come on. Like, I refuse to do any more healing until you come and tell me whatever it is you got to tell me. Because I know it's going to hurt. And I do not want to fucking go through this healing process to mend this wound just for you to come back when I'm healed and happy again. Just for you to take three three more swords and... Again. And I think he's... Consciously trying not to do that. And also not trying not to lie to you either. But he's... His instincts are telling him to omit certain things... And I, masculine, you better be very careful because just the slightest bit of the wrong omission and feminine's going to be like, what was the point? Here you are, not even 30 minutes into re trying to re reconcile and you're lying to me again. I honestly think the best thing to do is to just tell the feminine everything. And hold her, in her, hold her in your arms as she cries. Because there is something special about this connection. There's a reason why you guys cannot let each other go. There's a reason why you both want this. Um, and But I'm telling you. You, you took that bag of trust. And you ripped it off of her. While she was sleeping. Nonetheless, you took every last bit of trust she had. And even the little bit you did leave, her family took that after you left. So you took that and you left. And now she spent a great deal amount of time, especially because you're not the only one that's betrayed her. She's been betrayed by several people since you left. You, she's not going to let you come in and even take a little sliver of her trust. The minute she thinks you're, that's what you're doing. She is going to ask you to leave. So the best thing for, you ain't got to listen to me. I'm not a doctor, but I think the best thing is just to be completely honest. And when she starts to cry, just hold her because it's the only way this is going to heal properly. And for you guys to really 
have a true, solid, strong foundation for this to jump back off of again. Because that's one of the reasons why you guys split the last time because somebody was being honest or dishonest or deceptive and it was a faulty foundation. So why even try again if you're just gonna start building on a faulty foundation all over again? 10 of Pentacles. This, that's what I'm saying, like, this has potential to to last you guys the rest of your life. You guys could really share the rest of your lives, life together, build that generational wealth, build that legacy together, have a family. Um, but this feminine's been through too much. If you really want, if you really see this with her or with him, depending on how it resonates, but if you see this with them and you can't live, you don't think you can live your life without them, you better just get that diary of the mouth and just try and have some tact. Because half the stuff you're going to tell her, she already knows. She just wants you to confirm it so she can process and move on. And um, so if you really want this, I wouldn't even, don't even like second guess it. Just the minute you're like, well, should I tell her that? Just let it, let it out. Because the the, li the lies, the deception, the trickery, it has to die. If any ounce of that goes into the new foundation, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Changing old power, old patterns of behavior, changing the way you handle money and the way you handle each other. <laughs> um, because yes. There is, you guys are being set up for a very beautiful rebirth for something that's going to be truly magical if you treat it right, if you handle it right. So that's why everything from the past has to die, including the trickery, deception, and dishonesty, and everything that caused the foundation to be faulty in the first time around, or second time around, or whatever. Um, everything has to be swept away, has to be cleared away, processed. Like, you guys both have to deal with it and put it out of your heads and literally be at a clean slate so that the rebirth can take place and the magic can start to um, unfold in your guys' lives. The Hanged Man. You or your partner releases control and ego. Changing mind about money, career, or job. So maybe um, that's a part of the magic. Maybe when you guys come together and this foundation is proper and you guys have released all your blockages and your creativity starting to flow again and you guys are like your passion and your drive and everything's pumping because, well, you guys are igniting each other. You know I mean? Um, all your passion is going. Um, you guys might come up with something like spontaneously that is a brilliant idea that's going to give you this generational wealth. And you're like, you know what? I have faith in us. I have faith in this idea, this invention, this product, and I am done with this nine to five. Me and you are really gonna tackle this and we're going to we're gonna do this. Nine of Wands, time to take action. Enjoyable, uncommitted affair. Take the risk, action is favored. So if you're wanting it, Get on that horse and get your ass to your feminine or vice versa feminine. If you want to go to your masculine, by all means do it. Um, but I definitely think it's very important to uh, remember to don't make any empty promises. There's been enough in the past. Only lay out on the table what you know in your heart you are at this point willing and able to give. Because if you say, oh, yes, marriage or ring or you know, the five kids, the beach house, the like summer home in the Hamptons, like if you know in your heart that you're just not at that level, like for whatever reason, does it because it's I mean, doesn't mean it's them or your feelings for them. It just means that there's you're just not mature enough or you're insecure and you just don't have that confidence in yourself yet to where you can really see that in the future, um, then don't lay it on the table because 
that's see, that's a part of, and that's I mean, obviously, it's not your issue; it's hers. But the part of her, the way she thinks, is she wouldn't tell you something that she wouldn't give her life in order to follow through with what she told you, and she expects the same thing in return. Because honestly, if you told her, "Hey, I just want to fuck one more time," and like literally, it's not because I don't love you. But I really just need that healing sex that you have. and But that's all I can give you. She would love and respect you 10 times more by telling her that truthfully and honestly. I'm not saying she's going to give it to you, but she, she would definitely, you have a better chance of getting it if, um, if you would tell her like that because... When you're no nonsense, you expect no nonsense in return. Now, granted, I understand you've got to, we've all got to realize that each one of us is unique and none of us have the same uh, mindsets or the same train of thought or the same way of thinking, to, you know, 100%, 100% exactly. So we can't always expect ourselves and other people. We shouldn't eat. We never should make that expectation, but we should be able to be confident in the expectation of you following through on what you agreed to because you are an adult human being and you should know what you are and are not able and willing to give. And if you know you're not able and willing to give something, then you shouldn't say it. Um, no matter how bad you wanted something like, you should be honest and know, trust and believe that your honesty, you may not get instant gratification, but you will like, and <laughs> down the line, you will get what you want, whether it's with this person or someone else. But every time you're deceptive or dishonest, yeah, <laughs> things fall apart. And then you lose a month, two months, six months, a year. You know, because you got to do the healing all over again. And then you got to you know, mourn a future that you really truly wanted. But now it's not going to happen because you said you only wanted to have one person the rest of your life. And you really wanted Debbie, Harry, and Tom, Dick, and Mary. Like, um, And when Mary found out about Tom, Dick, and Debbie, she said, you know what? Fuck you. Like, I'm... I'm out, you know, you should have told Mary that, um, Mary wasn't the only one. And maybe Mary would have been a little bit more Mary about finding out about Debbie, Harry and Tom and Dick and Bran. <laughs> I mean, it is always better to be honest because you would be surprised, especially if you got a true genuine person that you're dealing with, how compassionate and forgiving they can be about certain things. But one of the hardest things to be compassionate and forgiving about is someone who will look you in your eye and tell you a bull faced lie. And they know when they tell it, when they know when they say it, they're, they have no intentions of following through on what they just told you. That is the hardest thing to have compassion for. But not at once. <laughs> Temperance. Heal rifts and avoid ego now. Cooperation and peace in workplace. So go in with a forgiving heart and a receptive forgiving and receptive heart like you know be willing to admit your wrongs and to truly ask for forgiveness from this person and then also be willing and open to hear what they've got to say and be willing to give back the same forgiveness you expect from them And then you will get your ace of pentacles. I love you guys. If you love me so much as I love you, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.